folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. I found out this week who's riding the beast. You'd be surprised. President Barack Obama, his heavily armored Cadillac named The Beast, became stuck on a ramp at the U.S. Embassy in Dublin. RTE State Radio reported Monday. The first cars in the presidential motorcade emerged up the ramp from the car park beneath the complex in Balls Bridge and passed through the gates without incident, but the beast quickly ran into trouble and got beached. Boy, think about the terminology here. Uh, the beast was coming along and suddenly there was a loud kind of bang, metal on metal, grinding, crunching noise, and the car was stuck. An RTE reporter said, the reporter said that it, as it drove out, the car appeared to have got its low underbelly, uh, I have one of those, caught on a piece of metal sticking up uh, that a, a gate might lock into. RTE said Obama and his wife Michelle stayed in the car while security officials and police officers went running over to the stranded vehicle. Oh my goodness. After a while, the Obama switched to another car to drive to the Marine Air Force One helicopter, waiting to whisk them to the village of Money Gal. Obama rides the beast. You know, it's just funny that they referred to that as the beast, and then it got beached. Revelation 13, I saw a beast rise up, rise up out of the sea. Hmm. I don't know. Some of you still think Barack Obama is the Antichrist. I think he is Antichrist. I just don't think he's the Antichrist because he doesn't have seven heads and ten horns. Anyway, uh, watched and monitored still. Uh, here is um, an article called Minority Report. There was a movie called this. A minority report, scanners are coming. Company receives $15 million to develop long-range facial recognition technology. We talked about this before. Ever heard of a company called Digital Signal Corporation? Neither had I. Well, remember the movie Minority Report? How cameras everywhere would scan Tom Cruise, instantly recognizing him to either welcome him to the shopping mall or send the cops after him. The same sort of facial recognition technology is exactly what Digital Signal Corporation is into, except these guys are for real. MarketWire recently reported that DSC received $15 million to develop three-dimensional, long-range, biometric facial recognition technology. Hmm, I wonder what exactly DSC's technology will be used for. Makes me think of the cameras being mounted on more and more police cars that are able to record virtually every license plate that passes by. With fa will facial recognition devices be used to keep track of everyone that goes to a baseball game, the supermarket, or a political rally. The DSC website doesn't offer any information about what their cameras can do. There's pretty much nothing there except a picture of a guy staring you down like he knows. He knows! In an attempt to get past the guy, I searched for a link but found none. Eventually I saw this. Our website is currently <clears throat> under, under, under destruction, under construction. We talked about this and several things, one of them which was uh, a video that we put out called uh, The All-Seeing Eyes, Surveillance Society and the New World Order. And I put forth the information there from what I can see from the scriptures that the devil is building. Satan, Lucifer, the dragon, the devil, the snake, whatever you want to call him. He is building a network, a network that will allow him to be totally in control. And I want you to stop and think about, think about how this is going to work. Um, You'll be driving in your car, or you'll go to the baseball stadium, or you'll go into the store, and instantly, from a camera that probably you won't even be able to see, a camera is going to take just a brief glimpse. All it needs is a glimpse of your face, or, the, or a portion of your face. You are in a database somewhere. They're going to be able to recognize you and know that at such and such time, you walked into such and such store or you were driving down certain uh, avenue in your town or somebody else's town, and they will be able to build and are going to build and are building right now a database of your life. We are getting to the point that every deed that we do is being written down. You can call it totalitarianism. You can call it communism. You can talk, call it total control because that is exactly what it is. The devil, no, he, the devil does not have the power of God. He must create 
his own power, his own network, his own ability to monitor everything. Now, <clears throat> we're living in a day right now where we're seeing this. We're seeing this come to pass. Go back 20 years ago. You had people believing that, uh, well, let's say the, uh, the rapture happens and I'm left behind here. Well, I'm still going to follow Jesus uh, and uh, I'm just going to escape everything that is going on during those days. The Bible says they shall not escape. And we're looking at a situation right now to where if you're playing games and you're thinking, I'm going to live how I want to and keep drinking and keep chasing women and I'm just going to do whatever I want to until I, when the rapture happens, then I'll sober up and I'll start living for God and I'll be one of those tribulations. I'm just going to be in, in the tribulation and not worry about anything and I'll escape everything. It won't happen. It won't happen. There's going to be such total dominance and total control over planet Earth in the very, very near future. You won't want to live here anymore. You won't want to live here anymore. The interesting thing, I actually watched the Minority Report. By the way, I watched another movie too. I, and I don't encourage you to watch movies. I don't say, hey, go see this movie. Man, it was cool. The special effects were awesome, dude. I don't do that. Um, and I am pretty selective on what I'm going to see, but somebody recommended that I go see four. So I went to see it. I'm going to tell you about it. I had a guy come up to our church last night. He's a police officer. Uh, he's a friend of our church, friend of our ministry. And he was asking me, he said, what's up? What's up with this? And I told him what's going on. He said, there's a lot of things happening right now. And I said, you're exactly right, brother. But anyway, I actually saw the minority report. And I was looking at this. And um, it, it is exactly the minority report, in case you don't know what this is. It's in a future time where the police with all this technology now have the ability to see into the future to see who's going to commit a crime. Well with this facial recognition technology not only will they be able to see who's going about they will also have the ability based upon the, the things that we do with our face when we're thinking certain things, they're able to say, you know what, this guy's got something, this guy's going to rob this store. We can see it in his eyes, we can see it in his face, and they will, they will arrest him on what the minority report called a pre-crime. A pre-crime. Uh, but the imagery, this, the whole mi minority report system was run by um, three people. It was controlled or powered by three people. Here's a, here's a graphic here. Uh, there's, of course, there's Tom Cruise with his all-seeing one eye. Um, but the graphic here, the three people who had something special about their genetics, okay? Just, you know, throw that in there. Uh, and they laid in this pool of goo and they were monitored all day long and they, uh, they, they were able to use precognition to look into the future to see who was going to do what and then they would display it on this video screen and Tom Cruise would go, okay, this guy's going to commit murder. And so they bust into his house and arrest him like five minutes before he actually kills somebody. Uh, but I noticed and took particular note of the imagery of the people with this advanced genetics. And I want you to notice the symbolism here of the three. And we're going to see that a little bit later on. I'm going to tie Thor into this. I'm going to tie a, a secret bloodline uh, into this and you'll you'll like where I'm going with this um, one of our watchers uh, <clears throat> I appreciate I appreciate um, the families that uh, watch our ministry and uh, they view our church services and things like that I am particularly appreciative of the young people uh, young young men and young ladies that are watching this ministry uh, whose parents are desperately trying to raise them in a correct manner. And we have them literally all over the place. And it, it thrills my soul when we get some young people uh, in tune with the scriptures and in tune with Bible prophecy and seeing what's going on. And um, there was a family, some, the young ladies sent me uh, some things, some books, some quote-unquote Christian books 
that they had read, that their parents bought them because they were part of like a homeschool, you know, recommendation reading list. And it was this idea that, well, your kids can't read Harry Potter, so read these. These are better than Harry Potter. They don't have witchcraft in it, uh, and, and so on and so on. So they read these books, and then, then, you know, they start watching different things, seeing things going on, and they start looking at symbols, they start looking at ideas and principles, and they go, you know what, that probably wasn't a good idea. And they sent me this one, I had never heard of this. Uh, it's a book series for, for Christian teens called The Kingdom of Eritrea. Now, that is a funny name. Um, and it looked like what I call, it looked like an anagram. So I did an anagram search, and the word Eritrea is uh, Terra Earth. So it would be the kingdom uh, of the earth, or the kingdom of Terra, or maybe the kingdom of this world. Um, but beyond that, it's a whole book series, and here you have knights and swords and all this kind of stuff. And I asked the question, a young lady that sent me this, I asked the question, I said, does this book have anything to do with like the fusion or the combining of two kingdoms? And she said, yeah, there is that in this book. And I said, because I recognize the symbol here. Uh, first of all, you have this lion, you have this eagle here, uh, and this eagle has, boy, look at it. The eagle has two heads. Just like in the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, their symbol is a double-headed eagle. Now, uh, let me pull uh, Albert here. Let's all look here. Albert Pike, in Morals and Dogma, has this exact same picture in it of the double-headed eagle with the number 33 and the crown and ordo ab chao and all that stuff. So this is like uh, an exact model of that. <clears throat> and here's what Albert Pike says in here. I'm going to pretend like I'm reading it. Albert Pike says, uh, no, Albert Pike says in here in Morals and Dogma, uh, the uh, Bible of Freemasonry, uh, he says that the double-headed eagle has everything to do, it's like related to the god Janus. Janus is a two-headed god, one facing this way and one facing that way. Uh, sort of like a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And, and the god Janus in this eagle represents the two heads facing in opposite directions. Are you getting me here? Opposites. Male and female. Yin and yang. The, a kingdom of heaven fused with the kingdom of the earth, Terra Earth, okay? That's what that, I think that is. I don't need to read the entire book series um, in order to figure out what ultimately is the design and the message of this. I'm looking at the symbols. They say, don't judge a book by its cover. I'm judging by what's on the cover of this because basically the two opposites are Genesis chapter 6, the sons of God fused in and mingled with the daughters of men, and they create a new body. They create, it is the exact opposite of Christ and his church. It is the exact opposite of that. This will bring in not the kingdom of Jesus Christ, but the kingdom of the Antichrist. Here's something else that one of our watchers uh, sent to me. You know what? I just happened... This is amazing. I, you know, I come in here and sit down, and I'm, I'm trying to decorate my desk here so it looks nice, okay? I want it to look really nice. And um, I just happened to open, you know, I just flip my Bible open here so it's open. And I open up here to the book of Ezekiel, because that's exactly where I'm going right now. And here is a, here is a, um, a, a lamentation or prophecy against the king of Tyrus or the prince of Tyrus. And it has to do, has to do with the man who was, or who, who was in the, um, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was I covering. He's covered with ten, tones, uh, ten uh, stones, precious stones. This is Lucifer. And it says, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. That's how we know that this is Lucifer, the anointed cherub that covereth. And uh, he is referred to here as the king of Tyrus. Now, the reason why I'm saying all this is that somebody sent me, um, uh, and I appreciate this, somebody sent me a, an email with a PDF file in it. And they said, Pastor Mike, um, <clears throat> I, we used to write songs. I used to write songs, and I used to want to uh, write, write all these hit songs that everybody's recording and make a lot of money and this and that and the other. And uh, he said, I signed with a, actually signed with a, with a record company, and it didn't really go anywhere and blah, blah, blah. But he said, um, he said in the record industry, he said, you're right. Um, who was it came out? John Todd, a guy by the name of John Todd. Um, 
actually kind of broke this idea back in the 70s that the music industry, the record industry, was all being run by Satanists, okay? Well, you know, one guy comes out and says this, and, you know, everybody says, well, you know, okay, well, I don't know, you know. Uh, in spite of the fact that all the rock and roll stars are singing about Satan openly, okay? Nobody really believes this, but John Todd comes out and says, yeah, the record industry is all being run by Satanists, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, we skip forward to today. Here this guy is writing a song, and he's re-signed with a rec recording uh, industry, uh, record label, and uh, they send him, they have, they have a manual, a, a, a writer's, a rock and roll writer's song manual that they sent to this guy, telling him, you know, here's what works in the music industry, here's what you do if you're going to write a song, you know, kind of do this and do this. And he said, and the book says when you get to the area of where you're going to start marketing your song, we're going to give you some advice on how to market your how to market your music. So he sent me the PDF, and I just have the chapter headings here from the table of contents. It says part seven, the final product ready, the final product ready for solicitation, the law of attraction, and the chapter headings are make your own miracles happen with the law of attraction, choice, and the law of attraction. The law of attraction defined. Our thought forms can sabotage can can sabotage by the law of attraction. Generate excitement and anticipation with the law of attraction. Visualization with the law of attraction. In other words, here's this record company telling the songwriters, use witchcraft. Okay? Use sorcery. Use divination. If you, want the, if you want to write a good song, channel it. Okay? The way uh, all the other rock and roll artists did. Take lots of, uh, of chemicals and poisons in your system so you can dream dreams and all this stuff. But the law of attraction... That's related to the secret. And I actually watched uh, last week um, while I was uh, doing a conference there and had some free time. I actually watched the video called The Secret. And it's based upon the law of attraction. And you had all these people from all these different places, including one, I, I would assume, a Christian minister telling everybody that if you just use the law of attraction, if you just generated power thoughts, then you could create your own reality, and it's 100% successful. Everybody that's ever done this is rich, healthy, got good-looking wives. I mean, they've got everything in the world that they ever dreamed because they're using their brain to control their thoughts, and their thoughts are creating their reality. That is witchcraft. God has a better way. God has a better way. God says, call unto me. And I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You want riches? If, is riches what you want? God says, I will give you riches out of this book that the world has never seen. Just ask me. I'll give it to you freely. And, by the way, you may not even know what to ask for. And God says, I'll, I'll help you finish all the sentences and because I, I know what to ask for and I know what you need and I'll give it to you and I'll bless you with it. Witchcraft says, oh no, you've got to say everything the right way. You've got to have these power thoughts. And if you have these power thoughts, then everything that you desire will be drawn to you just like a magnet. And there's, that, there's that graphic there, a uh, little cartoon about the, how the law of attraction works. And they, they make it sound simple, but actually it's, it's pretty complicated and it's witchcraft, okay? It's sorcery. It says that you have words of power or thoughts of power that you can generate wealth, health, success, likability. Um, I used to be, and I don't, I don't mind talking about this. I used to be in Amway, <laughs> okay? Okay, I was in it twice. Um, as a young man, I wanted to get rich, I wanted to make a lot of money, okay? And um, they were giving us books and tapes to listen to constantly. And all of them had a central theme. The central theme was you need to change your mind and change your way of thinking. The power of positive thinking was one of those. Uh, the richest man in Babylon was another. Seven effective habits of highly, or seven successful habits of highly uh, effective people or something like that. And books exactly like that, trying to get you to condition your mind so you think differently so that you can actually create wealth. That's witchcraft. That is, that is the law of attraction. 
And I'm not saying everybody in Amway does that, but the particular network that I was in, that they were pushing this pretty hard. And there was even a Christian minister who was pushing this on us really, really hard. And I'm glad God called me out of that. But that kind of witchcraft is in the church. <laughs> what would Joel do? <laughs> Joel Osteen teaches this, that you have creative power with your words. If you just say the right words with the right thoughts in mind, you will create your own reality. Here's Joyce Myers. And if you don't, there's Joyce Myers' own book, Power Thoughts. She teaches this. She had a book several years ago called The Answer is Right Under Your Nose, which she was talking about your lips, your mouth, what you say. She teaches everybody that if you say all the right words, then you invoke God, and God gives you a million dollars and gives you a new jet. Okay? Uh, and then, of course, Kenneth Copeland, who actually claims to be a god, and he tells everybody that follows him that they are little gods. What does that tell you? Something's wrong here, moving into, moving into Christianity. But here, I want you to get this, because the Bible actually has something to say about it. And you know it wouldn't be the Watchman broadcast unless we just brought the Word of God in on the scene. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 19. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. Because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. I have a theory. I have a theory why there's so much, uh, let's see here, let's get Dan Brown out here. I have a theory as to why there's so much, uh, so much novels and movies being projected into people's minds and ideas and stories given to them that are false and contrary to the scripture. And they all have a, the same theme. Um, and actually, Dan Brown, in The Lost Symbol, he talks about what's called noetic science. And this is what took him so long to write the book, because he was really studying this thing. He said, noetic science is basically that if you get a bunch of people in a room together and they all think the same thought at the same time, their power wavelengths will actually create this reality. Okay? That's, that's what he's teaching to here. And all the movies that are being projected at people, that if you really narrow it down, almost every movie that comes out of Hollywood right now is basically telling or retelling the exact same story. And I'm going to I'm gonna get to Thor and, and Tron Legacy, because I watched that too here in a little bit. They have the exact same theme, and they actually use the exact same symbol in both of these movies. Why is that? Why is that? The, the young man, the, the police officer, that pulled up at our church last night, and, and uh, I went out to and talked to him a little bit, and he said, what do you know, what do you know about this symbol called the Triketra? And I said, I know a lot. I, and the first thing I asked him was, I said, did you see Thor? And he said, yeah. I said, let me tell you what this is. And I'm going to kind of go over some things here in just a little bit. But we're going to start out with this story here that's going to lead us into that. Now scientists create a sheep that is 15% human. Scientists have created the world's first human sheep chimera. This is an old story from 2007, which has the body of a sheep and half human organs. The sheep have 15% human cells and 85% animal cells. And their, listen, look at this. And their evolution brings the prospect of animal organs being transplanted into humans one step closer. One, as, as the sheep steep, uh, walks, one leap closer to reality of humans and, and something else being mingled into man's DNA. We're, we're one step closer to that. How, who knows how close we really are? I don't know. But we're very, very close to this. Okay? They're working on it. And, 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 I, and something that to me was extremely interesting is that why are we hearing so much about you know, human DNA and, then, and, and sheep? Why is it sheep? Um, sheep and lambs and rams and goats, they're all animals that are mentioned in the Bible. And they are all the, the sacrifices that was to be made under the law. Why, why is that? I want us to go to Revelation 13. Uh, here's some, some, new, some new things that I'm seeing from the Word of God. Revelation 13. 
Verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. So this is the false prophet. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, I want to stop right here. Um, you follow this ministry, and you get to know me a little bit, and you know that I believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible. This is not some metaphorical, whimsical, philosophical, uh, ethereal idea that John is seeing. He's seeing a dream, and he's seeing in this all apocalyptic symbol, symbolism that doesn't literally mean what it says. I don't believe that. I think John saw a beast. I think he saw a spirit beast, and that's what they are. He saw a spirit world creature. That is, he's called the false prophet. He rises up out of the earth, and his physical description is he has two horns like a lamb, a sheep, a goat, a ram. He has two horns like a lamb. That is his description. So here we have, watch this now, we have Jesus who literally is the lamb of God, and we have his counterpart, his opposite, the false prophet with two horns like a lamb. Jesus speaks as his father speaks, but this one speaks as a dragon speaks. There's some software out there, you know, called dragon naturally speaking. Anyway, uh, so I want you to get this, the literal description of what John is seeing and what this false prophet is, is that he is a beast. He is a devil. He is a spirit. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. We're gonna, that's Thor. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, I'm, I'm talking about why is it that we're working on lamb or sheep DNA so heavily, and who's behind it, and what is the end goal of it. And I think it has to do with these devils, these spirits, that are in the, in the form or the shape of sheep, lambs, goats, and rams. And all of them were the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament. Now, Here's a verse. I want you to look at this. Psalm chapter 37, verse 20. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into the smoke, shall they consume away. He's referring to the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament law, and he's saying the enemies of God, and who are the enemies of God? Number one, principalities. Number two, powers. Number three, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. That shows you that they're not earthly realm uh, creatures, they are heavenly realm creatures. The fourth dimension, the spirit realm, that's who they are. And so the enemies of the last days are going to be these rams, goats, lambs, and, and, uh, and uh, what did I say? Rams, goats, lambs, and sheep. That's who they're going to be, these spirits that have this appearance or this nature. And God said, my enemies is going to be as the fat of lambs that, the smoke, that uh, they shall consume. In the smoke shall they consume away. They're going to be burnt up. And a sacrifice or an offering is going to be made of these devils in the last days. And the chief of them is the false prophet. By the way, what happens to the false prophet? He is taken and thrown into the lake of what? Fire. Exactly the way the Bible says it is. Who is it? Do you remember, do you remember the first animal that they admitted that they cloned. Do you remember who that was? Dolly. Dolly the sheep. Using DNA methods and all this stuff, they cloned Dolly the sheep. And who was it? Who was it that was responsible for cloning Dolly the sheep? It was the Roseline or Roslyn Institute in Ireland, I just spoke uh, last weekend with Alan Franklin, British newspaper journalist, a great guy. And he spoke several times at this conference about the Roslyn Institute, only he said it better than me, uh, the Roslyn Institute, how they are leading the charge in England and in Europe 
of, of doing all these monstrous things with DNA. Do you remember the Rose Line? We have Rose Line Chapel or Rosalind Chapel built by the Knights Templar there in Scotland, just, just down the road from the Rose Line Institute. This rose line, remember the rose compass or the compass rose we talked about here a few weeks ago. That was featured in Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. You learned about the rose compass that the symbolism of the compass, it had 32 points with the 33rd point in the middle. That's an image of the beast. And you had the... You had the fleur-de-lis, the supposed symbol of the, of the priory of Zion. The fleur-de-lis, which is a symbol for something. What is it a symbol of? I'm going to show you that here in a little bit. The rose line running through Paris that showed a, a, sacred, a sacred, hidden, secret blood line. A genealogy. A seed. We go back to Revelation. Excuse me, Revelation. We go back to the book of Genesis. Uh, in Genesis chapter 3, and we have the following words of God. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He's referring to the serpent. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. Now, literal. She had a seed. Her seed through her bloodline and her lineage went all the way down to Jesus Christ. That was her seed. The serpent seed. Literally, a lineage, a bloodline, a genetic something that is hidden, secret. They don't want anybody to know about it. It's, it's, it's buried. It's buried. Here is a, uh, here's a picture. This is all the, the grail research that I did several years ago. It just keeps popping back up. Um, here is a, a painting done by a man by the name of uh, Poussin, I think is how you would pronounce it. And it's called the Shepherds of Arcadia. Arcadia is supposedly, um, Arcadia represents a, a mystical underground stream of secret knowledge. Think about that. That's like the river Styx that flows through hell. Okay? And this mystical underground stream of secret occult knowledges, knowledge actually has in, in its reference a bloodline, a secret bloodline that you see the symbolism here. There, the, these three shepherds, and of course this woman here represents Mary Magdalene. She's, you can tell maybe she's pregnant. Her belly's pooching out a little bit. This represents Mary Magdalene or Isis or Ashtaroth or, or mother goddess earth Gaia. Um, that's who she represents. And these shepherds, Shepherds here. Who do, what do shepherds guard? Sheep. And they're, they're pointing at this tomb. Now this tomb has an inscription on it. It says, et in Arcadia ego, which sort of means I myself am also in Arcadia or something like that. Um, the reference to me means that this, whoever is locked inside this tomb in Arcadia is hidden and he's waiting to come out. That's interesting. Because there was a TV show back, CBS tried this for a couple seasons. It was a TV show called Joan of Arcadia. And I want you to notice the uh, symbolism here. They, use, they actually use the compass rose as their symbolism, a, which denotes the bloodline. And Joan of Arcadia featured this, this young girl named Joan, who lived in Arcadia. And she is seeing God in everybody. In fact, the lyrics of the, of the opening song says, what if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us, just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home. In other words, th there's God in everybody, and Joan of Arcadia was seeing in everybody God. Okay, not, not the God that you and I believe in, but a different God who is buried, hidden inside of a bloodline. Now, Something that I noticed. This is, this is like brand new stuff. Something that I caught on to. I actually presented this for the very first time in Bristol. I'm going to close up here on the hands of the shepherds of Arcadia. Okay? And I used to try to figure out what it was they were pointing to. But now I'm looking at what obviously is their hands themselves. Now I'm going to show you something. Okay? Um, we have talked about this, this symbol before. Okay? 
if I do my fingers like this, it has it implies several things. Number one, the triple helix. We're going to talk about that. Um, three fingers pointing up and two pointing down. Or sometimes you have three fingers pointing down and, and two pointing up like this. Okay. It depends on the orientation of the hand. If I do it like this, then I'm then I'm showing you. Uh, we talked about as above, so below. The gods falling from the heavens. The gods ascending up from the earth. That's what's going to happen in the last days. Um, but we also have a simple, we, we have a number here, okay? We have the number two, and we have the number three. Now, of course, if I did that, that would be five, okay? But it's like this. They're separated out. Here is two, and here is three. Twenty-three, okay? And I, I want you to look at this now. In the Shepherds of Arcadia, we have... Uh, on the uh, shepherd there on uh, on the left, notice that the two fingers are up and the three fingers are down, 23. The other one, the same way. You see the two fingers first and then the other three fingers are hidden, 23. Let me explain this. When a little baby is born, in the, in the 46 words that Adam spoke, saying, now this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, um, they shall cleave to one another and the two shall become one flesh. I didn't quote that right, but anyway, if you go count, there's 46 words. And that's interesting because when a little bitty baby is born, what has happened is he has gotten, he's gotten uh, 23, oh, let me do this right here, 23 chromosomes from his father and 23 chromosomes from his mother, making 46 in total. They're telling you the secret of where Arcadia is, where, where he's buried, where he's hidden. They're telling you the secret. You don't believe that? Here's another one. Remember Baphomet? Notice his fingers on his, on his right hand. You have the two down and the three up. 23. And then on the lower hand, it's opposite, but the numbers are in order. 23. 46. This is where the beast is hiding out secretly. See the symbolism of DNA? Uh, the two serpents twining around this pole here. Okay? That, that, and there's something added then to man's DNA. Something is going to happen to, to bring this, this bloodline, this secret thing, this beast... It's going to make him rise up out of the sea. And I saw this imagery um, when I went to see Thor. When I went to see Thor. Um, notice that the marketing for this thing. There's a hammer. I don't know if you know anything about Thor, read comic books or anything like that. Um, I read a lot of comic books. I just didn't read Marvel comic books. I didn't like them for some reason. But Thor has a hammer. We're going to talk about that. And Thor is the god of thunder. Hmm. Does that sound familiar to you? Well, here's what Manly Hall said in The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Manly Hall said the Goths had three great festivals, the most magnificent of which was celebrated in honor of Thor, the prince of the power of the air. Guess who that is? That's Lucifer, okay? In the movie Thor, <coughs> Thor is um, the, son of, the son of Odin, which is where we get the, the name Wednesday, Wednesday, Odin's Day. And the day after Woden's Day is Thor's Day. I don't know if you knew that or not, okay? Um, and Friday was, I can't remember who Friday is, Saturday was named after Saturn. I don't know if you knew that either, but that's what it was. Monday was named after the moon. Um, Tuesday, I forgot what Tuesday was. But anyway, they're all named after gods. Okay, so anyway. So we have Thor, who is the prince of the power of the air. And he has control over thunder and lightning. And in this movie, I mean, there's a lot of thunder. And there's a lot of lightning. Lightning. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember the Verizon commercial? Remember the Verizon commercial where the guy runs to the mailbox and he gets out this box, he takes it in the barn, he opens it up, there's this cell phone in there, and he grabs it and now he has the power of lightning. He is, he is, he rules the air. He's the prince of the power 
of the air, and he has it in his hand now, like, uh, uh, who was it? Percy Jackson, Perseus, the god who could control the thunder. And the, it's all the same god. It's all the same god. Manly Hall says later on, he says, the triune god of the Indians was, re re was reproduced as Odin, the almighty father, Freya, which is Rhea or, or Free, his wife, emblem of universal matter. So we have, we have uh, the father, which is the spirit realm. We have Rhea, his, his mother, who is the, um, the, uh, the emblem of matter, which is the earth, the heavens and the earth, are going to join together. And they're going to create Thor, his son, the, the mediator. Here we recognize Osiris, Isis, and Hor, or Horus, around the head of Thor. See how this word Thor and Horus are similar. Uh, around the head of Thor, as if to show his eastern origin, 12 stars were arranged in a circle. Are you getting that? He was also taught the ultimate destruction of the world and the rising of a new one. This is what this movie and this whole idea... This is, I want you to get this. This is being projected now. Here, here we have... Uh, we have everything here in the Da Vinci Code. Uh, we have the Lost Symbol. We have all the movies. We have all the video games, all the comic books, all the TV shows, all the commercials now are projecting this image into our mind, trying to get us to think these power thoughts. Are you with me? Trying to get, get us to, to think all of these, all of the same things. They're all teaching the same lesson. Um, uh, what was it? In the X Files, you have Mulder who, uh, you know, lives and he's searching for the Holy Grail and he dies and then he's resurrected and now he finds the Holy Grail and, he, him, and him and his red-headed wife, Scully, they have a son who's going to be the savior of the world and he's got something in his blood that's going to change the world. I mean, we're seeing this picture. Uh, Neo in the Matrix, um, he is the one. Okay, the, the, excuse me, the one. He's the one. And, and there's something about him where he dies and comes back to life again, and now he's the God, and he's going to, he's going to lead everybody into Zion, this sort of New World Order thing. Okay? I, I mean, I'm amazed at how similar all these stories are telling the exact same story. <clears throat> so here we have God, uh, Thor, who is a god, and they'll notice the lightning just like the Verizon commercial. And here's Thor's hammer. And Thor's hammer, <clears throat> especially in the movie, I'm watching the movie and I'm going, hmm, the hammer, and then appears on the side of the hammer this. This symbol was on the side of the hammer, the Triketra. What is this a symbol of? I you to notice this, this graphic here of, of Thor's hammer. Uh, and this goes back to ancient times. Notice the DNA there. And the triketra, which is a, a symbol for three-strand DNA. And, and I explained this in our, in our video, the triple helix, and I've talked about this in other ones. Here you have man's... Here you Watch this, okay? Here you have man's two-strand DNA, which is the book of God. Okay? God wrote this, and here's man's two-strand DNA. Okay? And so... They uh, they say, well, this is not good enough. Okay, we're gonna this won't this won't allow men to be gods. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna change man's DNA so that he can become a god. Okay, we're gonna mingle something with it. So they take a third strand and add it to it. Okay, let's say that this is the Book of Mormon, which is not. I'll show you what this is in a minute. Here is the Book of Mormon, and we're gonna add the Book of Mormon to the two testaments of the Bible. That is your triple helix. That is three strand DNA. I'll show you that in a graphic. Oh, by the way, this is the New King James Version of the Bible. Okay, um, so, something's, something's wrong there. <coughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, the Thor's hammer uh, is a Masonic symbol. You see the gavel there of Freemasonry. And basically, I'll just very quickly, I'll just tell you that that, that gavel, notice that it has, a, 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 that has its two parts, one inserted into the other. Okay? Everything that Masons talk about is vulgar. It has to do with male and female being joined together, and that creates the hammer. By the way, it was the hammer, a mallet that was struck upon Hiram Babiff's head that, that killed him. Okay? It is also an emblem of what's called the Tau Cross. The Tau Cross is basically an emblem of the triple helix, three-strand DNA. You'll find the Tau Cross used in a lot of Catholicism where they have this fake Jesus, this idle shepherd hanging from it. That's not the real Jesus. That's the fake one 
who is present in the tau cross of the three strand DNA. Now this goes back, I'm going to kind of rehash some information from our video, the triple helix, just to kind of educate you a little bit about what's going on. Back when Watson and Crick were uh, doing small amounts of, um, of uh, LSD so they could visualize two strand DNA, uh, proven fact, um, there was a guy by the name of Linus Pauling, and Linus Pauling was also a whatever a chemist is or whatever it was, a biologist or whatever, and he was also theorizing about man's DNA, but he was kind of off a little bit because he thought man already had three strands of DNA. And so here is what, if you were looking at it overhead, here's what it looked like. Um, and this symbol basically is a triple helix symbol, and I've seen it before. This is the ancient symbol called the Triskela, and <clears throat> it's an ancient symbol for three strand DNA. It looks exactly like that. It's a, it's a stylized form of the triketra. Um, here is, uh, and Tom Horn, uh, I met Tom Horn last week for the first time. Uh, we hit it off pretty good. He's basically doing some of the same research that I'm doing. And in his presentation, he uses exact same article, and we didn't collaborate at all, uh, here from Scientific American, Triple Helix Designing a New Molecule of Life. So you understand the idea is that in order to make man better, which is what Masons say. Masons say, we're going to make good men better. Okay? Think about it. Um, and they all talk about the brotherhood of all mankind. Well, in order for us to all be brothers, we'll have the same, have the same father, year of your father, the devil. So they're going to make man better. And in order to do that, we're going to take his two-strand DNA, and we're going to add a third strand to it. We're going to fuse it into there. Daniel chapter 2 in the fourth kingdom, remember, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, these goats, lambs, rams, and sheep of the, of the devil world, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's the big, that's the secret. Okay, that is the secret. Um, in the movie National Treasure, the treasure that they were actually looking for was under this symbol here, a symbol for three-strand uh, DNA. Um, let me move through some just some symbols here very quickly. The uh, Ubuntu symbol. The Ubuntu symbol, um, that's a Linux operating system. Now, I happen to be kind of a Linux fan. I like Linux. Um, but the Ubuntu symbol comes from, and President Obama used this term one time. Uh, he's, he used the term, he, but he said it better than I did because he's like African. Okay? He said Ubuntu. Okay? And uh, Ubuntu means... Everybody joining together and getting along in a community. And notice the symbol is the triple helix. Uh, here is from Cardinal Health. You'll see it in healthcare. You'll see it in pharmaceutical companies. Here is, uh, they're introducing Care Fusion, which is, uh, if I remember right, Care Fusion is one of these new electronic medical records databasing systems that now is mandatory under the, uh, under the bank bailout law. They had to slip that in some, somehow. For some reason, they had to slide that one in under the radar. And the company that's leading the charge of this is called Care Fusion. Notice their symbol. Uh, here is PNC Bank leading the way. Virtual wallet. By the way, this symbol is related to the mark of the beast. I'm convinced of it. And notice that no man might buy or sell save he had the mark. And that's the symbol for PNC Bank. Uh, Spiriva. Spira. Spira means spirit. Okay? This is a medicine. Notice the Fibonacci spiral symbol there uh, inside of the, of the, of the triangle, three-strand DNA. Here's another one, Lipitor. It has three circles fused together. Okay? That's your triple helix. Oh, here's one called Trilipix. Okay? Called Trilipix. Three things fused together into one. And uh, Trilipix... Uh, is associated with a pharmaceutical company called Salve. Have you seen that word before? Yeah, that's what's written on Baphomet's arm, Salve. Salve and coagula. Salve means to dissolve. We've got to break down the old systems so a new one can rise up. Are you ready for this one? Here is the two pillars of Jacob and Boaz on September 11, 2001, the Twin Towers. They were dissolved, and a new one is rising up in its place. Do you get where we're going with this, people? Salve Pharmaceuticals has, a, and if you have ever had suspicions about pharmaceutical companies, just look at their logos and symbols. That's all you need to know. 
Okay? We are headed literally into a new pharmacological, new world order, and there is going to be a change brought about to mankind. We have to dissolve the old systems so the new one can rise up in its place. Uh, here's another company that does life science and biology and chemistry and all this stuff called Biotrove. Look at, uh, look at their symbol. Uh, Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker. Do you know who that is? You know who Peter Drucker is? I can't wait to tell you this. Peter Drucker is Rick Warren's guru. Rick Warren learned everything that he learned about marketing, business principles, getting the word out, building a mega church. He learned everything that he learned and knew and practiced from Peter Drucker, a new ager. Notice the Peter Drucker foundation symbol. Emerging partnerships, new ways in a new world. Uh, they talk about the third way. You know, you can be a Republican or you can be a Democrat, but they don't really work anymore. Okay? It's not working. That's one way, and then there's the other way. And instead of us trying to go one way or the other, what they're telling you is, let's go, let's go a third way. Um, you have Mormon Glenn Beck, who is trying to get everybody to go a third way. The third way alliance, a fusion of things. Notice the symbol here. Uh, and the back of the $1 bill is a triple helix. The two points at the base of the pyramid represent two-strand DNA. The illuminated eye at the top is the third strand being added. No, notice that it's separate from the other two. Okay? And it comes, and it's on top. It comes down from heaven. That's the capstone, by the way, which the King James refers to Jesus as the cornerstone, but the NIV refers to Jesus as the capstone. Okay? Uh, but anyway, this is, this is three-strand DNA here. Um, I saw the movie Tron. Okay? It basically, it's telling the same story. Uh, by the way, I didn't, I, didn't tell you, I didn't tell you what happened with Thor in the movie. I didn't tell you what happened with Thor. Thor is the God who got kicked out of heaven. Okay? He got kicked out. And he falls from the sky to the earth. And he wants to, and there's a bridge between the nether worlds and earth, and that bridge is destroyed. It's got to be rebuilt. And, and Thor is kicked out of heaven, and his hammer falls down from the sky. And, and his father Odin says, Only the worthy now can wield the hammer. And so Thor, this mortal, this, this god who has taken human shape, this beast who is a man, uh, who falls from heaven, um, he, um, he, he, the, the earth is in danger. The destroyer is coming. And he's going to destroy all the people who live in, uh, let's see, there was a town in New, Mex in New Mexico, and I don't think it really exists. I think Marvel made it up. Uh, it was called Puente Antigua or Antiguo, which I found out means the ancient bridge. And he comes to the town of the ancient bridge, and the destroyer is going to destroy it, and Thor goes and offers his life in sacrifice, so he can be sacrificed, and he dies, and the woman, his girlfriend, who kissed him and fell in love with him, she runs to his side and picks him up, Oh, Thor, oh, don't die! Then the hammer of Thor comes rising up out of this pit that it's in and falls and lands on Thor. With, and the hammer of Thor has this three-strand DNA. And when it lands upon Thor, that's what gives Thor his life back. In the movie Tron, The Legacy... There is a an underworld, and the the hero of the of the movie, David Flynn, who is this genius computer programmer, he he finds out what all the gods are. He discovers them in the computer network underworld, underground. He discovers them there, the gods, the spirits, the devils, the angels, the all the all the myths and fantasies that man has ever had, and he knows that they can create a whole new world. And there's only one left, and she needs to be saved. And, and he shows in this, in this uh, movie here 
what her computer code looks like. Her, her digital, he refers to it as her digital DNA. Take a look at it. I'm watching this and I'm going, okay, I get this too. Okay? Uh, it's a fascinating world we live in when we study symbols, when we learn symbols, when we learn um, what the devil has in mind. It's a fascinating world, it's interesting, but it, it's, it's deadly. This world, this world is, is being corrupted right now by these very stories, by these very images, by all of this that's going on. Our world is headed toward literally a rebirth, a new world, a, a new order. By the way, the, the TV show event closed out. They're done. Um, they got canceled. And basically, the whole idea was, was that these aliens who have come to the earth now are going to evolve and have a rebirth. And it's not going to work out so well for mankind. That's what you learn. I think that rather than going the way of the world, I'm choosing life over death, immortality over, immor over mortality, not by having my DNA changed, not by having some devil thing added to my human body, because to be honest with you, I don't want to live in this body forever. I want a new one, which comes about by my belief in the cross of Jesus Christ. This power of three that's always being referred to in these movies, and what the, the tri really represents all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's sin and sinfulness right there. Christ died amidst two thieves. He was the third there on Golgotha. He was literally numbered with the transgressors. And in his death, he destroyed the power of death. That's what he did for you, and that's what he did for me. That's the road. That's the route, the road that I will take for my immortality. Not this way. They can keep it. This is Pastor Mike. God bless you. I love you. Exciting things are going on right now in our ministry. We have, our, we have new websites up. We have our live broadcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Time. We are having a ball with this saying, and I'm so excited to be able to bring this to you. Um, we still have the, the Pure Bible Study. We are, we are uh, putting our services live online on the Internet, on our websites. You can catch them there. And we appreciate so much those of you who help participate. Remember to pray for us. Keep us in your prayers always that God would bless us and God would protect us here and continue to use us for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us out if you can. We certainly appreciate it. This is Pastor Mike. God bless you. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.